And in studio with us on this first day of school, the president and vice president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Pat Murphy and Jackie Long, respectively. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So, Jackie, yeah, we, we're around here. We're, we're not seeing the mounds and mounds of sugar. What's going on here? Uh, well, I didn't give Ron Long much notice that I was going to be on. So. Bold. Yeah. Very bold. I haven't finished all the last stuff yet, so it's probably a good, good technique there. You know, a mound of sugar for Jackie and a mound of paper for Patrick. He's, yes. he's reducing his paper uh, That's uh, true. Uh, notes today or I, crutches. I, I think he's learning. I have found that I bring stacks of things in here and I never open them. You never so, get a chance to, yeah, right? last couple of times I haven't brought. Yeah, we cannot anticipate what you are going yeah. to ask us. <laughs> we don't even know what we're going to ask you. You know, people say to me all the time, can you send me your questions in advance? And I say, I can't. And they say, why not? I said, because I don't know how you're going to answer the first one. <laughs> how you answer the first one determines what the follow-up question is. So tell me what all your answers will be. Uh, let's uh, get into the first day of school here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, what's our situation teacher-wise, school bus driver-wise, custodial staff, cafeteria workers? How are we staff? Well, I uh, got a report from Dr. Schooley. Uh, this morning from HR and uh, as of August 16th we had posted for service personnel 299 jobs filled 235 there's 64 still open and 29 of them are a positions 79 new service employees and 37 of them are substitutes from which have never worked in the system before professional 29 total vacancies of which uh, 15 are classroom teachers vacants still open uh, 119 new employees since august 2022 and we've hired 170 new professional um, and 247 permanent subs which when in total between transfers resignations and new positions and so forth we've posted over 570 professional positions since april Jackie, I get that's extreme. Yeah, I get lost in numbers that do a lot of other folks. One of the problems we've had in the last year or so, the teachers and uh, uh, the support staff have all burned out because of being overworked and not enough backup. The numbers that you just read us will that in some way avoid this burnout as, as we as we go through the year? The numbers I just read you will probably increase their burnout okay. because okay. there's not enough staff mm -hmm. not enough subs yeah not enough, not subs. enough subs okay no, well, yes. not okay. enough yeah. people filling regular positions and th i blame that not on the board office not on hr i blame that on the situation we're in in the nation so what are the qualifications for a sub it depends on what if it's prof i'll let you speak to well it, your professionals have to have some degree of college um and the uh, service have to pass tests. Uh, they uh, take a uh, screening test for uh, service employees, uh, credentials uh, from the colleges that they attended are, are, are uh, required. Uh, they do not have to be uh, trained teachers to be subs. Now, when I was in school, I remember, <coughs> excuse me, when there's a substitute, it was movie day, right? You just, they, they Okay. You watch watch a film. Is that it? Is that different now? I mean, substitutes actually are they generalists, or or do they actually teach the subject that that they're there? That makes sense. Well, the te the the classroom teacher is supposed to leave lesson plans for them to follow, and uh, uh, I I believe that uh, there are the uh, permanent employees are evaluated on their preparation for the class for when they're there as well as for their sub. Now you're uh, saying permanent no, sub. Let me jump in real quick here because Dylan Bishop actually spent a good bit of last school year as a sub in Berkeley County Schools. He's our producer. Uh, Dylan's got his ears on. Good morning, Dylan. Good morning, Rob. Yeah. So, so uh, in a, I guess uh, if you could assist with uh, what Pat was talking about, what some of John's questions were in regards to what, uh, uh, were you considered a permanent sub, Dylan? No, I was a day-to-day -day sub, essentially just here and there, switching around which which teacher I'd be in for. Long-term or a permanent sub would be for the same teacher in the same classroom. I see. And how many days approximately did you work last year in the school system as a sub? Oh, that's a good question. At least three days a week, I'd say. Through the entire school year? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that's over 100 days then. 
Yeah, I, as for John, if you're wondering, uh, basically what I normally did on a normal day was, since the kids all have laptops now, they would, basically the teacher, the permanent teacher, would upload assignments to the Schoology, their online learning platform, and I would essentially just be there to say, get out your laptops and do your online assignment. A lot more often than not, that's what I was doing, essentially, and to just overlook the classroom as they do their assignments. Yeah. Right. You have any follow-ups for Dylan on uh, the subs? No, it just seems to be, is, is this a position that would be good for retirees and for you know oh, folks who... Definitely. Yeah. Oh, you mean substituting? Yeah. Oh, definitely. We have a lot of retirees that sub. We have a lot of retirees that are permanent subs. There used um, to be a limit on how much a retiree, though, could draw a pension check and still get into the school system to sub, correct? Well, uh, state-wise, but that's changed. Um, Social Security-wise. Uh, yeah, if you're under... Probably an issue. Yeah, you can only make so much. Yeah. But, but uh, as far as state-wise, state code, that changed this past session. Question for Dylan, uh, uh, discipline, uh, subs are uh, vulnerable in some cases, uh, you, it depends on, on you, but um, how was the discipline and uh, did you refuse to go to certain schools because of discipline? I, I, it was more of an age group thing for me. I, I it's, There's a different kind of way that you have to control different age groups. I always uh, prefer the high school level, and middle school was kind of the an iffy in between. But I, I never had a huge problem with discipline in the in the schools. Part of it, I think, is, you know, obviously like substitutes many times go into the classroom pretty much just knowing that the kids probably don't respect you as much as a regular teacher. They just, a lot of times, they're just not going to do the work that you tell them to do, which, I mean, to a certain extent, it's more so it's on them if they don't do it. And it's, it's I'm not the one grading it in the end. But I, I never had, I didn't have a huge problem with discipline, but I, I, there's definitely the problem children that sometimes, you know, you just, you have to deal with at school. But there, I wouldn't say there was one school I was ever like, oh, I'm not going to that one. But okay. Dylan mentioned laptops. Mm -hmm. uh, that implies that the schools provide laptops to every student? Yes. Uh, starting at what grade? Uh, well, I know uh, kindergarten. and uh, Kindergarten uh, all the way through. Yeah, have, okay. uh, they have their iPads. I, um, do they, uh, do the uh, kids they, carry the iPads home with them, or it has to be just in the, the building? I think they stay in the building. Uh, I could be wrong so on they that. So they're not used for their homework when they go home? I, I think, Pat, do you I know think that? The, I think the secondary students. Uh, Dylan, do you know yeah, the I, answer I would to think that? the secondary students would have to. How mm. would you get your work done? I don't know. That's my question. Yeah, yeah Dylan, do you know the answer to that question? Uh, could you repeat the question real quick? I was I was reading a comment from Damon Wright that I think I have to, I'd like to answer here in a second. Sure. Do the students take their laptops home or iPads to do their homework? And then yes, actually. It was kind of a problem for kids sometimes. A lot of the problem kids sometimes would say, they, oh, I can't do my work. I didn't bring my Chromebook today. Well, so. and, and one of the issues with that is at the end of the year, you know, we have a loss of iPads yeah. that, you know, and they're not cheap. So um, there's an issue with that. But And uh, you want to respond to Damon's uh, comment on Facebook, Dylan? Yeah, I see the comment he has that says he ha uh, the fact that he had to do it three days a week says how much it's increased since many of us were last in school. Maybe it's just the size of the county, but... There were, I get calls every single day at a school, literally just yesterday, actually, I'm still in the system as a sub, and right as soon as six o'clock hit, which is when the, the, the phone system starts calling subs, I got a call immediately. And a lot of times, like every, every evening, I have to turn off the calling system. A lot of times it was at one of our sports broadcasts, like when we were setting up, mm -hmm. right at six o'clock, I'll get 25 calls for for substitute jobs well, pretty much every day and some of that is right now is because we don't have our positions filled so they're calling for the first day of school to have somebody in that classroom so um, uh, i know a, a cook that said um day before yesterday she got eight calls just that was in the morning so um. hey a couple of years ago uh that a friend of mine was a dentist uh uh, retired dentist and was very knowledgeable in chemistry and a whole suite of things. He could not teach because in the classroom because he was not a certified teacher. Uh, a lot of talent that went to the, uh, went to the uh, to the side. Has that been corrected? 
No, I think the State Department still has requirements, uh, but the uh, I think they have uh, started relaxing them. We have uh, there's alternative certification now that uh, schools uh, counties use, and we have a lot of uh, teachers. Um, retirees are those individuals that are working with alternative certification. That's not as obviously not as rigorous or as detailed as a normal yes. certification. Now, I have I, I, one of the people I coach with is a coach, and a lot of the coaches are teachers. That's uh, what I meant to say. And one of the people I coach with is a teacher, and he does special ed. It's not in Berkeley County, uh, but he has two master's degrees. And the problem that they have in Berkeley County is nationwide. It's not unique to Berkeley County, obviously. It's nothing that you're doing wrong in attracting teachers. There just aren't enough of them anymore. Exactly. And his point when they relaxed the standards in Frederick County for teaching was, well, since they've done that, I wish they would forgive some of my student loans because I was told I had to have these advanced degrees if I wanted to do this in the classroom. And now they're letting just anybody do it in the classroom. What did I spend all this money on degrees for? He says, I got loans that are like a mortgage because I was told that's what I had to have. What do you tell those people in the system already who've put that money out for advanced degrees, Jackie? Well, I would tell them that, you know, I, I feel for them because, you know, I have family members that are in, a, in the same positions, but at that time, that was the requirements. Uh, we're in a different situation now, and I think um, we're, we're, gonna, we're doing what we have to do. What bothers me about it is that uh, I know those people have alternative certification, but they're not certified in the field that they are required to, that they're teaching. And that upsets me a little bit, but I don't know what else that we can do. Well, one of the problems that we are facing is that uh, back when I was going to school to be a teacher, the state legislature was paying a large percentage of my education. I still I had the GI Bill, and I had to work part-time. I had a, a, a wife and daughter that I was supporting uh, two of those years before my wife became a teacher. But the, uh, the the higher education had more support from the legislature at that time than they, uh, they, they do now. Their higher ed has been cut back. Uh, uh, the other thing was, <laughs> I, I shouldn't go down this rabbit hole, but I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, teachers had a military deferment during the Vietnam War, and we had a lot of people wanting to be teachers to stay out of the war. Now, I I was the opposite. I had served my country during that time. But uh, at that time, you had a surplus of teachers. Social studies teachers, you could see a stack that high. Uh, people who um, had degrees trying to get teaching jobs. But, the, um, but today, with the um, decrease in state support, for uh, teaching and the amount of money it costs, people are not making that investment to go into teaching because the return is uh, so poor and you have to pay those debts. Pat, you mentioned uh, teachers and, and how much more it costs to go to school now and what the salaries for teachers are. We know that's pretty much guideline by the state that the counties can supplement that a little bit. Is that the same for custodial staff, cafeteria workers, bus drivers? Is that also set by the state and you pay what they say you can pay? Or can you well, supplement we supp that? We supplement our, all of our employees through the excess levy. Mm -hmm. um, but their base, the base is set by the state, though, correct? The exactly. base is set by the state. You can't say we need bus drivers, we're going to pay them $50,000 a year. You could, but you'd have to pay the excess yourself. Yes. Yeah, you can. You can. Correct, Pat? Well, I, I think... Uh, I mean, you, I mean there's a cap. counties can give county raises. So mm -hmm. uh, the problem is having the money to give a large county raise. It, it, you, you could give a, a bus operators a bonus. Uh, you're not, although the state doesn't allow you to give a bonus, you have to call it something else. Um, you know, for years we gave some kind of little sign-on bonus, and mm -hmm. after uh, 90 days or maybe the first semester, you would be paid that do you not do that any longer i don't i'm not sure what they do now i think they do something similar to that there are certain constants in this equation of of teaching it's never been a high paying job it's been a decent paying job it's always been what it is in, in, in terms of teaching you say that within your career which spans a year or two um there used to be stacks of applications and now we're woefully understaffed when did it change and what changed well in this area <clears throat> Uh, a teacher in this area 
doesn't have, enjoy the same quality of life living on the salary that the same salary generates in other parts of the state. So you have, uh, you have that differential. But the problem is statewide, isn't it? The, the problem of getting teachers is statewide, yeah. yes, sir. Nationally, it's, it's a national problem. Mm -hmm. Bus drivers is a, is a national problem. Right now, every, every classification is, uh, we ha we're having trouble getting aides, cooks, bus operators. And so when did that dip start? Well, I was in, uh, part of my position was in personnel, and Pat can finish answering his mm -hmm. uh, question also. But I remember, and even, I retired in 2014. I'd say four years before that, you'd have a stack of elementary education applications a foot deep. It was hard to get an elementary ed job. It was hard to get a social studies job, as he said. So, um, and then they, uh, as time went on and as requirements, um, like uh, as special ed requirements were getting deeper and thicker, and um, then then those applications stopped coming, and, and as discipline started getting worse, and as uh, people didn't want to go in the classroom. Let me let me follow up on kind of what we talked about, Dale Lee earlier. Uh, our school, our teaching model is very similar to what we've been doing for generations on top of generations. Uh, the difficulty we're having with finding teachers, bus drivers, cooks, support staff, is it time to take a, a hard look at the, of the way that we're providing education and, and challenge the, our traditional way and look for a different way? One of the resources, and I know uh, we, the Chamber of Commerce just had a breakfast for new employees, and I and I remember uh, uh, something that Mr. Arvon was talking about back when he was here, and we're still discussing is grow your own teachers, and so I think we had 50, 50 plus teachers of the core of new teachers, but what we're not looking at, and what I think you're alluding to is, first look at West Virginia. We're one of the bottom state performing states academically. And Berkeley County uh, needs to improve within that range a lot. But we have a lot of teachers that we've recruited from other states. And we're not tapping into that resource of how do they do it in their states and, if, and in the states which are successful, what are they doing? So sometimes uh, w what your question is, should West Virginia look at the way we're doing it? Because we're doing it at the bottom. And then uh, we should start looking at other states. I, I, uh, one of the groups, the labor groups, dislikes is Alex, or Alec or something like Alec, that. Alec, yeah. And, uh, but I was looking through one of their brochures, and they used the NAEP scores to rank uh, the, uh, the students. Now, NAEP does not test every student in every state. It's a sampling. But I was looking at the number one performing state, which was Massachusetts. Well, they had, you know, maybe we're at 30 or 40 percent. They were only up at about 50 or 60 percent performance level, but they were the number one state. So why aren't we asking teachers in Mass from Massachusetts, what are you all doing up there? Uh, I brought along the chart that the, uh, we have to look at uh, as a uh, as a county, and it, th this. There are 16 schools on there. Two of them are the ones that we're really focused on that are low performing, the top two. But the uh, but we have other schools, and one of the common problems there is uh, is our or our special education subgroups. So uh, that that's what we have to start looking at is, and everybody complains about the testing. What well, the testing doesn't reflect well. You, you know, everybody, they say you can't take tests. Well, when you're 16, you're going to take a driver's test, written and uh, physical. Uh, life is full of testing, and you have to uh, perform there. So we have to accept the, the, the yardstick that we have and try to comply and pass that. And, uh, and I, I think that uh, uh, this is going to be one of our goals this year. The board is working on that now. I can't speak for all five of us. Yeah, and and uh, and I'm just 
pulling ideas out of my hip pocket, Pat. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I don't know the answer to it. I'm not involved in the school system now. So it's awful easy to be on the sidelines and kibitz. But listening to yours and Jackie's description of the difficulties which you're facing to provide adequate teachers, adequate staff, uh, and we've been hearing this, the same, same points for the last several years, <laughs> If anything, it keeps getting worse. If you project 10 years down the line, it's going to get worse still. Uh, my sense is that we're taking kind of a Band-Aid approach, get through each year, get through each month of a school year, and hope we get some relief. We haven't yet found the way to get relief. Uh, and, again, I don't know the answer, but I think with some very innovative minds, you could come and find out a – an alternate way that would meet the basic goals of education that we may have to pursue because I don't see this situation getting any better. Well, what I, what I agree with, what, uh, let me approach it a little differently than what you are. I look at public ed, and I've been involved in as far as a classroom teacher, but also as a legislator and as a school board member for years and a county commissioner. And a county commissioner. But the uh, public education and I call it the world's biggest marshmallow. And you go up and you punch it to where your arm sinks into that marshmallow up to your armpit. And you walk away and say, I had an impact upon that big marshmallow. But you walk away and that marshmallow just fills back out. And, it's the thing. and that's one of the problems with it. Uh, take, for example, we still promote students by the year. But we know in January who's on the bottom of the group, and but we keep on taking that group up to June. We should take those students in January who are not performing and move them back to September's work. That's a good point, Pat, and we're going to run out of time here to get further along with that point, too, as we have to do our final commercial break.